Hello， 大家好，我是 BYG 的 AD 大狗。这个意义对我就非常的重大，因为就第一次嘛。上次是因为被租借了，然后去参加了 AM 赛，也算是大型的赛事。这次算是我第一次靠自己努力争夺的，非常的好啊。就是那种如果我们不在同一个队伍之中的话，我们应该还是会继续联系，然后继续当朋友。意义非常重大，就。可以让世界都可以看到我们这个赛区，就在这么小的环境里面，也能强力生存吗？ Welcome back, everyone, to Worlds 2021. Everyone's a doggo fan, uh, admit it at home. Uh, but that nation focused me. They have clawed their way up the ranks in Group B. And while the whole team has played their part in that, Emily's going to walk us through a run of play from DFM's top laner, Evie, and show us just how he shines on the international stage in this installment of the State Farm Neighborhood Tactics. So what are we watching? So we are watching how Evie is going to join up on this bot side just to set things up a bit. There was a skirmish previously in the bot 2v2 where um, DFM actually do get the early push in this lane because of leashing and just the way that uh, the Thresh Ophelios works in this lane. However, uh, you know, the... Uh yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so the big thing about this is that uh, they traded one for one. Um, they're going to match each other three for three down here. The most important thing is that Crazy used his TP to get back into lane. So he is not going to be able to match Ebi here. And when I think of Ebi's strengths, I do think obviously Urgot is a pocket pick for him. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play the clip now. Uh, uh, Urga is a pocket pick for him, so we were looking at him in this lane. He was getting shoved in, and this is a really good play because it's going to immediately get him back into the game individually, which means whenever he joins up for fights, uh, you know, later on, he's still going to have a massive impact, and this for me is what really swings it into DFM's favor. Obviously, he just TPs in. He knows that Crazy can't match. Um, this is a very simple play. You see the, you see the really nice predictor <laughs> yes. in there. Um, this is a really simple play, but I I think it shows what we want from Ebi and when we're thinking of his strengths and weaknesses, his weaknesses, maybe champ pool. Again, he's on the Urgot, which we're not looking at as like a high prio pick. He's done the blind Nar before that hasn't worked out, but he has a really good team fighting sense and a really strong sense of when he can make plays around the map with his team. So if we're looking at a DFM win, we will be looking at something like this from him, even if he is not doing as well in lane as we want. So even if in the draft we see him picked a little bit into a corner or just a couple of the things he is known for, <laughs> um, he was still, uh, to, phrase it, to phrase it, maybe get the most out of the champion and get the yeah. most out of the impact he can have on the game. Yeah, and I think we saw that from the NAR too in his NAR games, even though obviously the blind NAR was punished. Uh, and, and I think teams have figured out that that is one of his picks that he's going to default to. Even in team fights, we were seeing him use Rage Bar really well. We were seeing his uh, engages and kind of flanking come out really well. So if he is able to maybe get a laning lead perhaps or able to make plays like this where he makes the most of TP advantage. Um, that's where he's really going to shine with the rest of DFM. And uh, Detonation Focus Me, if they get the win here over Beyond Gaming, they will be able to lock top two in Group B. Super important because that means that you get to skip that first um, best of five and head over to Saturday and have more time to prepare. Clon chronicler, uh, rather. Um, sometimes you trip over your words. Tell me about Beyond Gaming then. I think they came in with a lot of hype due to also, you know, the, the competition they put up against PSG Talon. Where do we land now and especially in this game versus DFM? I think this uh, specific game against DFM is going to give us an uh, answer to the question, will DF or will uh, Beyond Rather reach the level that we saw of them domestically? Um, even though in the end they were bested by PSG, uh, they were able to go even in head-to-head, -head, right? They only lost the more important match, the actual final. But what we've seen in them thus far hasn't really been up to par. I'm glad that we're seeing Liang play as opposed to PK because I felt like his impact in the game was very negligible. But... I do think that they still need to clean up their early game a little bit more domestically. They were able to find a lot of leads, and especially against a team like DFM that's so good at pushing their advantage, I'd really like to see them clean it up. Well, that nation focus me and beyond, they face off for what could very well be the last time in 2021. So it is time to check out your MasterCard fan predictions and see who the fans at home <laughs> thinks will win. It is very, very convincingly in favor of that nation focus me. And I think that is kind of the vibe I get off my analyst as well. But we'll see what happens. Happens. DFM, they have a chance to guarantee at least a top two spot in the group and take a huge step towards the world's group stage. It's time for our casters. Hello and 
welcome everyone. It is day three of playing Sea for the World Championships in 2021. I'm still Patriot Time, that's still Moxie, and we also got some video games to play and finish out this group stage. I failed my tweet! I tried to tweet that I was casting again. <laughs> Couldn't get it out in time. No. Come on, I suck. And my favorite was when uh, Travis was like, hey man, I spent all this time gassing you off about your first cast. You take your stance in the official broadcast to flame me. And to that I say, of course, Travis, do you know this man? Looking forward to the games today, more importantly. Uh, this is a huge matchup. You heard the analyst test talking about it. Uh, Beyond Gaming and DFM both were pretty hyped heading into this uh, playing stage. And I think they both started a little flat. They both feel like they're ramping up right now. Um, Beyond Gaming did have to play... Uh, you know, C9 yesterday, it feels like that's one of the teams that has solidified as at the top of the table. And of course, Yoel struggling right now to find a win. And these two combined with Galatasaray is all still a little murky to me even. So I, I'm really looking forward to this game and getting some clarity on, on exactly how all these teams stack up. Yep. Because there is still potential for some tiebreakers depending on how this game goes. Yeah, as a reminder, it's a five team group and there's basically like only one knockout slot, right? Only fifth is gonna leave the tournament. So there's still plenty of room here for these two teams to, you know, figure out where they stand kind of in the rest of the uh, the next stage, I suppose, of play-ins. But drafts have started. Uh, Lucian Aphelios rise there on the Dead FM side. Beyond Gaming have banned away LeBlanc, Talon, and then one more to go there. Interesting to see some of those bans on the DFM side aimed at Beyond. Uh, not seen priority on some of them. The Rise, the, the Lucian so far. I mean, a lot of those are just gen generically banned anyways. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting to see that. Uh, compared to what we saw on day one, day one to day two, a lot of the draft was, look yeah. at what they literally played the game before and ban it. Yep. <laughs> uh, so this time looking a little bit more um, big picture, I think. And the MF takeaway on blue side. Yeah, not actually something we've seen that often, although I'm sure as Emma's popularity continues to stay pretty high, the teams will maybe start valuing her a little bit more on blue, blue so that is going to be the first pick here. I guess if you're banning Aphelios, this is the first pick that does make sense, because yeah. Unipon went off yesterday on Aphelios, uh, so not giving him that champion might seem a little silly, but in the context of this first pick, it makes a lot more sense. Yeah, I mean, we also saw Doggo's Ezreal, which I was about to yeah. hype up right as he starts locking it in. Um, he popped off in their win yesterday, just looking like aimbot hacks online, just doinking people with the skill shots left and right. Um, but I also think his his MF game was decent, uh, the game before. And it was a really tough game to play it, where they had, you know, MF throwing her ult on top of you. There's a Malphite, yep. there's a Silas who could take your Moomoo's <laughs> ultimate. And he still managed to find opportunities to get good ultimates off. Like, he was actually really smart about his positioning um, in a game where it felt borderline impossible to play. So I, I understand not only just as a power pick for Utapon, like you're saying, but even saying, like, hey, even though they didn't win that game, that was a pretty gross Doggo MF, and we don't want to give him that. Yeah, I mean, at some point, you have to pick your poison with Doggo, and uh, I guess Ezreal is the least threatening thing, but uh, we'll see. I think, like, as you said, he looked very good in it yesterday, but I think it is a champion you can try and at least, you know, get ahead in the lane, and that does seem to be a dead FM plan that they're comfortable with. We saw Emily actually just highlighting what Evie's Urgot did, teleporting down to that bottom lane, basically breaking that Aphelios game wide open for you to pawn. So, uh... That is a lane they're very comfortable playing too, especially if uh, Yudapon and Gang kind of feeling it in whatever 2v2 they pick. Silas, though, is the last pick here for Beyond Gaming. It's followed by Leona and Lilio, who is seeing way more presence than I thought she was going to see. I'm guessing it's a jungle, but I yeah. guess you never know. Yeah, I mean, I assume it's jungle as well. She did, like we kind of hit on yesterday, get some buffs. Um, you know, base regen's down, but more healing uh, off the camps and stuff like that. Her move speed's a little bit, uh, the buff lasts longer. Um, and so, you know, not surprised to see her picked up a little bit. And early on, like, like this, you know, trying to match junglers. There were a lot of 80 junglers still up. I think this telegraphs a little bit about wanting some melee or at least physical damage solo laners for the side of DFM. And especially into Silas, you know, you often see those kinds of things. We already have seen the Yone counter pick before. Uh, I believe that was Moen who actually played that one. So yep. now on the Silas side of the matchup, we'll see if they can. Yep, there, there's the ban, as I was about to say. Uh, you know, these Beyond Gaming is like a second ahead of me every single time I hate it. Stop. <laughs> I'm trying to sound smart here. Now I look like I'm just copying what they're doing. No, no, you're all good. Go in there, the band for Dead FM. One more to come here. Looks like solo lanes are going to be the target here. Which, again, makes sense, kind of given how things are shaking out. Uh, definitely very, at this point, fairly standard. Lilia may be the only standout, but we've seen these five champions uh, all tournament long so far, so not too surprising. It's interesting to see Silas continue to be a very common, like, first-round blind mid. Yeah. 
Uh, but I think he's just at the level where people are very comfortable playing with him, yeah, regardless of what ultimates you have available. And especially on red side, given that on your third rotation, you can ban out those two kind of counter picks or whatever you don't really want to play into, which you see there with the Aureli and the Yone ban. So a little bit of protection thrown his way. People aren't quite, even though he seems really high priority in terms of presence, you know, he's not getting first rotation. He's not given the ability to be counterpicked in the first phase because people do respect the fact that his landing phase is a little bit exploitable uh, and, and you don't want to end up behind and with no good ultimates to take. Alrighty, well, Amumu is back on the board here for Kino. Had a, a decent showing in that same game, I believe, against the, the terror of the Cloud9 Malphite. <laughs> but again, like, just kept getting picked on. Definitely a move who is like a... He had a tough game. Yeah, you know, Feast of uh, Femme kind of support almost. Yeah, I, I, I'm hoping to see a bounce back. I think, uh, you know, that was just a situation where they, they identified him as someone they could pick off a bunch. Um, but the Amumu, I believe, still winless. I think I, so. I, I might have missed one earlier in today. Yeah, I have to double check ready. this morning's games. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but either way, struggling to, to find the wins on it, but... Still a power pick. Yep. It's going to win. I swear <laughs> yeah. to God, it's, it's going to win a game. It's not going to be a winless at Worlds, guys. I mean, they keep picking it. So at this point, uh, it does feel like at some point the champion is going to uh, kind of demonstrate why it's been so popular because, you know, you don't pick it. You don't pick it to lose, Ooh. that's for sure. But Akali is a nice one. This is uh, some really powerful soul laners here out of the Detonation Focus Me side. Evie back on the Urgot and Aria taking to Akali for the first time in this tournament. Yeah, I mean, Akali is a very fun champion to watch. Uh, did get a couple little changes, um, getting a small health increase in regeneration as well as growth, uh, health regen growth. So, um, you know, she was always a champion that the way her play pattern worked was often like you take like a D shield and you would kind of just try and sustain through lane early on, eat your harass, you know, use fleet footwork to try and heal up a little bit through the laning phase. And with all the nerfs that have come in over time, <laughs> they've, they're putting a little bit more back into that sustaining through the early game. Uh, focus for for the champion. Now I'm trying to remember which patch they buffed Fleet on. So many, I've read so many patch notes in yeah. the last week. But that way, if, if that is uh, in the mix here of, uh, you know, patches leading up to this tournament, that would help her as well. If the matchup kind of calls for it. Although I think Silas, it's funny, like, people typically consider Silas as, like, a, a counter pick that people are comfortable playing into Akali. But I feel like what mostly ends up happening in those lanes is, like, everyone just farms it out and then, like, Silas steals a cool ulti. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, you don't actually really have much pressure. It's just you're just trying to farm in this melee matchup. Yeah, and I feel like Akali has more power. I was talking about a lot of her laning phases about sustaining. That's mostly in range matchups. Here in a melee one, uh, against Silas in particular, she should be able to land quite a bit of harass and have priority in the lane phase. Um, and then it's about winning those 2v2s because both of them have a lot of outplay potential, which also means you can whiff your abilities and get outplayed yeah. horribly as well. <laughs> All right, last pick uh, just to make sure we get it in there. Was Aatrox actually there for Beyond Gaming? That is going to be the top lane of choice to go up against the uh, the terror that is Evie's Urgot. He has uh, lost on Nar, but won on Urgot. So for the Detonation Focus Me fans out there, Evie certainly feeling in a comfy spot here. But this is a matchup I feel like we saw a lot of when these champions were in Vogue. So uh, we'll see how it shakes out. But I feel like any lane where Urgot gets ahead is a good time for Urgot. Yeah, uh, Urgot, he's, he's always in that bruiser category, yeah. despite being ranged about, you know, you have a good combination of utility as well as just carry potential if you get ahead. Um, if you fall behind, you know, at least you have your ultimate ability and if you can get that onto a target, get a flash fear in and actually have a team fight presence. Um, but it's been a while since I've seen the, the Urgot Aatrox matchup. There was a time where this was one of the key matchups, um, but they both kind of fell out of the meta for a little bit and, and now seeing it again, I wonder if the changes that have come through with all the champions items. Uh, if it's still, I believe it was a little Aatrox favorite back then, if I remember correctly, uh, but we'll have to see. We shall indeed. I also love that both teams tried kind of the, a different version of the same level one. Just like moving up, stacking in a brush, but not over committing, basically trying to catch the other invade, it felt like. But uh, they will pass by each other and we'll have the jungle start off on whatever sides they're looking for. Does appear to be red side here for De Dead FM and looks like Husha is pathing to his own red buff, so it's going to be opposite st side starts here as Arya going to escort these minions into mid. Also worth noting, Arya going for uh, Conqueror mm -hmm. as the keystone, not the fleet footwork despite the buff. It, it wasn't super substantial. I was just looking up quick. Um, it was just some healing for champion hits on it um, and to reduce some of the healing off minions, which <laughs> for a champion that wants to sustain in the lane sometimes, not the case. And like we said, this is a more aggressive matchup for the Akali. You can actually win this one. You're not just trying to, to survive early right. on. So I, I definitely like the more combat oriented yep. uh, room choice. For sure. And you can see Moen going with the same choice. Again, going to be like lots of scraps in this kind of 
matchup. You're going to be hitting each other a lot, so Conqueror definitely makes sense. It has been a mainstay for these two champions for a little while, as top lane going to be the fun start off here. Evie trying to get it done early on, at least, up against Leong. But uh, it really just feels like every Aatrox matchup eventually comes down to the same thing, which is how many times did I hit you with my Q? <laughs> the Q minigame? <laughs> yeah. Ooh, nice. That is actually brutal there for Moen. Does have some potions, but that's quite a lot of harass to take. Yeah, the E on Akali is such a disgusting ability with how much damage you can do if you get both procs of it off, and you see right there. Some great trading by DFM soul laners. Both of them early on getting huge health leads. Evie hits two early on, uh, and then is able to go onto Leon, gets the flip back from his E. And uh, tough spot to be in now. Yeah, that was a great little juke on the Q as well, just not letting Leon trade back any damage at all. So bottom lane is the next place we'll visit, and uh, we definitely have seen Ezreal get aggressive here. Doggo does want to try and play up. You you are loath to concede a lane as Ezreal, but uh, because it's, it's so much easier, as you said yesterday, actually, Mark, to, you know, to get your skill shots in when they're being pushed in under their turret, but not always something you get to do. Ezreal often kind of has to concede to whatever pressure is happening, although Husha is actually coming down here for a little wraparound. Might be tough, but MF is not the most mobile champion. Does have Flash, though. Now gonna move in, Uniform gonna have to get out of there. Good flash, Gengo gets done, but now they're gonna turn it back around. It's another TP. Everyone's skin's coming in hot, and now Hucha, he's ignited, and that's like the first bottom ice screen. In fact, it is. Uniform is gonna have it happen again as Moan comes in, but Arya comes through as well. A second blood on the table, Uniform collects it again. And now Arya looking for Kino, not gonna take it, but I'm getting deja vu, Mark. Yeah, second time in a row, the Evi Urgot TP play, the bot lane turning it around for his team. Again, his opponent. Opponent top laner had burn teleport. Doesn't seem like Beyond Gaming was aware that Evie was in a position where he had TP advantage and can come down on that play. And so, despite it looking initially like a good wraparound gank to at least force some summoners, DFM's able to collapse with more men quicker and they turn that one around. And again, it's because Evie, like we saw with that trade, got such an advantage that Liang had to take that early recall TP back to lane. And, and that just opens up a window for Evie to exert his influence. All right, this is just so nice. You know, Yupon's like, he knows what he has to do. He's out of there. Yeah, I mean, they, DFM, I feel like we're pretty well coordinated here. Like, that TP by Evie is very quick. As soon as the Moomoo's bandage crossing in, you basically have him starting that teleport. I wonder if they were aware, like, hey, we have TP advantage, let's beta fight bot. I mean, that could easily have been the call because the rest of the team was, was pretty well prepared to match. And I like how Arya basically was just following the stylus as we get the uh, expected Evie pop-off cam at this point. I love it. It's my favorite cam. Every time that every reaction came, good or bad, I feel like, although it's much better when he's happier, uh, is a treat. And uh, unfortunately for him, unlike the last time this happened, he doesn't have three kills or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but still two assists is going to give you a nice boost of gold. Didn't really lose much as far as farm went anyway. Just walks back to lane, is, you know, barely away behind and will be able to catch up pretty easily. And now this time it's Uniform that is massively accelerated in his 2v2. Yeah, picking up those two kills is huge. And we talked about, you know, Ezreal wanting to be able to get the push a little bit. Not going to be the case especially with MF picking up the double buffs from the kill on the Zin Zhao. Uh, and like you said, already having a serrated Dirk and two more long swords in her inventory. This is going to be such a strong MF. You can expect to see more focus in the bot lane. I think once one of these lanes gets rolling that hard, you want to keep exploiting that. And so at six, I expect another dive down there if they can unlock the Akali and, and Steel can get down there as well. No level six for either mid laner here, but Husha could be in trouble. Steel, no ulti, but Evie once again rotating through. Nice cues there from Steel as Moan's actually fighting Arya. That's not a fight that Winning. In fact, they're losing on both fronts here to oh. Beyond Gaming, and that is just such a nice setup there. Evie once again is setting it up, and he's going to knock down that second kill. A double in top side this time. Oh, DFM are popping off 4-0 in about five minutes into the game. That was an aggressive invade by Husha, and Steel is able to show the power of the Lilia. The chase down by landing the Swirl Seed, being able to get your Q stacked up. You start moving so fast, they have no chance to get out. And it is a long, long journey to safety from the enemy Gromp to a turret. Alrighty, well, like you said, uh, things definitely going well down the bottom side. I believe this is our first time with Lethality MF. Uh, Ghostblade has been pretty popular on her in general. We have seen it already in the tournament, but I don't think we've had an MF game where she's gone Ghostblade first, and I think just given the texture of how this game is going. I mean, they're almost 3,000 gold ahead at eight and a half minutes. I think Unipon's more than happy to take the snowball item here. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at this point, it's kind of build whatever you want. I'm probably not yeah. going to criticize it as long as it has AD on it. Eh, maybe you build Billy Andrews at this point. I don't know. Have some fun. <laughs> um, I do think with how the game is right now and, and the fact that there's not that many pure tank targets, you know, the lethality build would normally be 
pretty defendable in this spot, but especially when you're snowballing this hard, you know, your double up and, and some of the just trading patterns you'll have will do so much damage. Alrighty, so like I said, very big advantage built here early by Dead FM. Steel's gonna go ahead and take this top side crab. Already has the uh, steel caps up and has Predator as well, so. Uh, with level 6 for the Lilia, significantly more threatening now in any sort of invade or gank situations. So, you know, Steel went from kind of, you know, mostly farming and deflecting who she's invades to now having options to, to get really aggressive. In fact, that CS differential in jungle is kind of absurd for how early on in the game it is. Yeah, I mean, Lilia is just a generally fast clearing jungler, not just damage-wise, but with that move speed buff that we're talking about, like, you just zip through your camps. Uh, the fact that Hushi got killed in his initial gank attempt, you know, it's gonna set him behind, then killed on his invade, uh, it's just a tough spot to be in. Nice hex flash, Kino locked up there. Perfect stuns back-to-back, -back. it's just so easy. A Amumu shredded to bit to Zutapon. Finds kill number three. God, I have this, like, Amumu point that I've been sitting <laughs> on for a couple games, and I'm just never gonna get to make it, because nope. every time he gets slammed, ugh. I feel so bad for him, but, you know, this is uh, the, the trouble that comes in uh, with the champion. He just doesn't have that many escapes and defensive tools. And so if you fall behind, he is one of these kind of quote-unquote feeder support champs where you're supposed to be the frontline engage for your team, but you don't really have the stats to back it up. Oh, that is brutal. Doggo not going to get re -stunned. Good cleanse to get out of the Zenith Blade at the end of it all. But Steel now up to the top side of the map. This looks very tricky. Leung does have Flash, going to have to use it. And Steel doesn't want to commit his to try and get the follow-up, so they'll just let him go. DFM forcing summoners all over the map right now. Gang having a really good game on the Leona. A lot of these plays being keyed off of him. The kill on Amumu, the you know, cleanse on the Doggo, all that stuff. From the support that everyone was hyping up coming into this tournament, like this is the big change for DFM's roster. It's why a lot of people were saying if they're going to top the group, it's going to be some of the changes that come in with the support that they wanted to play the whole time, but couldn't do until uh, the import situation changed with, with their roster. And uh, now he's here and he's showing why people were hyping him up. Yeah, Kang has been uh, real good. Was on Thresh yesterday. Leona looking just as accurate with the skill shots. Arya dancing out of trouble there in the shroud, but is going to be a okay. Uh, this did mean Steel's attempt in top lane. I should say that, of course, Beyond Gaming do get the first dragon, but I think Dead Affirm are happy to give it up here. They'll take the Herald. At this point, they're the team that's more than happy to trade, you know, a little bit of their tempo for gold because they are just looking to snowball this game as hard as they possibly can. I mean, this is this is a monstrous early game. We're not even 10 minutes through and. If these plays go down topside, we could look, be looking at four, maybe 5k, depending on how much damage they could get done. Yeah, I mean, DFM have a relatively early game focused comp. None of their, their champions scale exceptionally well, especially when you look at some of the champions on Beyond Gaming side. You're going to think that they'll be a little bit better in, in the mid to late game, but with this much of a lead, they're in great spot. Are you kidding me? How did they even get that SEO? Doggo forced to flash. Gang again, Ugh. having the setup. And Moance is down here teleporting. It's a 4v2, and they're leaving. They're leaving the bottom lane. They, they have to spend so many resources just to survive these situations. You have to get the flash out of Doggo. Well, they would keep chasing him down, probably, in a 2v3 situation if you didn't TP Moance. So, you know, even though it, it looks like, oh, that was for nothing, I mean, maybe it saved his life. It's it's hard to say, because this is just doing everything they can to stem the bleeding on Beyond Gaming side. Yeah, out of summon is down in the bottom lane, at least for Doggo. So the next time Gang hits a somehow miraculously accurate skill shot, gonna be even easier. Steel is lining up something spicy here, although I think Evie's actually the one to try and make sure this can happen. Now they move in, no flash as we noted before. Swalsey does Ooh. hit, Drowsy is good, Evie puts him in the blender, flips him back over, and Leung is absolutely dead. And there Evie goes, getting the meat grinder going on Aatrox. Nice setup by Evie, uh, or sorry, excuse me, Steel. Um, the Swirl Seed Splash on the minion, still hitting. Leong behind it was pretty clutch. And there we go, MF getting her. Ooh. Straight for Eclipse. Yep. Don't yeah. need to stop at Ghost Blade. That is, uh, that's terrifying. And Doggo's okay. like barely survives uh, in the bottom lane before. He's now no longer Doing surviving. Doing true damage on Q. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a tough spot to be in for them. Well, we'll see what happens. As you said, there is definitely room here for Beyond Gaming. This is a tragic early game, if you're them. For Dead FM, they're super happy with how it's going, but we have seen the power of Doggo's as you before. It is a lot to ask of him right now, but if they can stabilize the game, if they can keep this dragon count up, there is always hope here for Beyond Gaming to get back in. It's just trying to minimize the damage you've taken at this point, because this landing phase is only going from bad to worse. I feel like in the lane is when it's really actually more difficult almost to make a lot of plays from behind because it's harder to get numbers advantages while people are still locked to lanes uh, without TP advantage being in your favor. If the enemy jungler's bot lane, 
and your jungler goes bot lane, then it's just a 3v3 and you lose. And there's there's more kind of these set plays. It, uh, Beyond Gaming right now, I think, are in damage control until the turrets inevitably drop on DFM side. And then they do have playmaking tools, whether it's the Silas, the Amumu, even the Zen. You know, they, they can potentially try to start picking people off in side lanes and stuff because I expect DFM to end up in a 1 3 1 lane setup with these solo laners. So. You know, right now you're just trying to stem the bleeding until you can start finding pickoffs. Oh, that's a rare miss from Gang on camera as Kino is actually going to go back in. He's got the ulti ready to go for bullet time. Going to make Moan's life miserable. Now that if I'm going to escort their support out safely, and unfortunately for Beyond Gaming, I'm not sure there's a re-engage. Who's looking for the angle? Doesn't even find the W for the potential follow-up. So Beyond is going to have to be content with that. Yeah, it looked like a little gun shy potentially for Beyond Gaming. I know you don't want to chase into an MF ultimate, but Kino had ultimate there. I think he had probably his second charge of bandage toss. I, I feel like you could have locked Gang up enough to get that kill. And that would relieve a lot of the pressure because there was a, a Rift Herald in the mid lane. Um, you know, maybe you can actually get your own red buff if the enemy team uh, has dead members on the on their side. So I, it just felt like maybe Kino could have pulled the trigger on that one. And you do eventually need to. You can't just hope that DFM Turbo wins it into you. <laughs> like, you have to take a risk at some point. This could be problems here. Every lining up the ulti finds it long range. Boosh is just going to get blended. It's not enough yet. The dot. Can't quite tick over, so who should we'll escape this time? Oh god, the Zin ult coming up clutch there. I think if the red buff burn from Steel, as well as the just dots that come with Lilia's kit were allowed to tick, uh, you would have seen him get low enough for the assassination or the, the finish off by Evie. But because he was outside the range of the uh, Zin ultimate, you can see he was actually blocking the tick damage. So that is a really cool combo. Though. Like It doesn't come up that often, Lilia Ogre, I feel like. But uh, like such a long range potential kill that you could get just from Steel confidently invading. And it makes sense why, right? There's complete control of the top side or really every lane at this point for detonation. Focus me, you don't have to be shy about walking in and Ooh. stealing the enemy red buff. You do have to be careful under the enemy towers though, Evie. A little bit bold there, is gonna have to flash away. Yeah, nice done, nicely done though by Liang, defending his turret, getting the flash out of Evie, denying some of that uh, playmaking potential. Just getting a little overconfident there, I think, on the Urgot. Without your ultimate, your actual all-in threat drops significantly. Plus, allowing Liang to land some Qs underneath the turret means that you can't trade back onto him, and at that point, you've taken too much damage to seriously push him off of you. So, lose the flash there by Evie. Not the end of the world, but just a slight uh, bit of an ego check, potentially. <laughs> Liang saying, like, no, 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 you're not that far ahead of me that you can just ignore me in front of a turret. I will. If, uh, I feel like if history is any indicator, the next time we see that happening, Evie's gonna solo kill him. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, you hope Leong doesn't get baited by like, hey, I won that trade. Maybe I can fight him now. It's like, no. Types in ult, ult back, by the way. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's almost back up. As uh, Detonation Focus Me are going to start this second dragon, just really trying to shut out any options beyond gaming have in the early game. This is not a Drake you can realistically contest for. You are still behind, actually, approaching 6,000 gold now. And no towers have even been finished up. There's yeah. definitely some damage under plates, although that has, of course, now faded, given that we are past the 15 minute mark. But. It's uh, it's gonna be tough here. I mean, the first rift tower went mid, got some plates. The first time you lose a tower, you're gonna lose even more gold. Yeah, it's one of those things where there's a bunch of standing gold on the map just waiting to be taken, and DFM have not really tried, it feels like, to focus on the turrets. There's been jungle invades, there's been some rotations for kills and stuff, but like at some point they're gonna go to Utapon now, who just finished his second item at 15 minutes. They're gonna be going and, and trying to play around him a little bit and start breaking these turrets down, I think. You see Utapon moving up for this next Rift Herald. Lovely ward as well. I, I, I assume by Evie there in the top brush. Finds Husha roaming in for the lane gank. Evie with the team right now actually is gonna be shredding through these minion waves. So, uh... Now plenty of lane control. Level 11 as well for the Ogre. Highest in the game tag with his other solo laner as Arya. is also a Finnish Rift Maker. I mean, it's just uh, an embarrassment of Mythics <laughs> on the Detonation Focus Me side. So they'll start this Herald and I think as predicted, there will be no contest here for Beyond Gaming. They are just, again, trying to minimize their losses rather than incur more of them. And a walking at the enemy is one way to incur more losses. I mean, I do like the Beyond Gaming attempt there to sneak a kill on Evie in the top lane that you, you called out that Evie did a good job warding off. But like, if you find that kill on Evie, maybe you can stop that Rift Herald take. And, and you know, it's the way of attacking uh, an objective, not by actually contesting the objective, but picking off someone before it. Um, and it was, it was a good idea. It didn't end up working out, but at least it shows that Beyond Gaming is thinking proactively. Hey, they're probably going for Rift Herald next. Let's try and find a kill before then. And, the, the worst thing you see is when people just sit on their heels and do nothing and because they just get shell-shocked at how far behind they yeah, are. Absolutely the correct play. Um, 
as you were saying, like you do want to try and overload areas of the map when you are, you're at such a disadvantage, but it is tricky in the landing phase, so they did what they could. Unfortunately, the vision control was there for that defend that it didn't work out, but still absolutely the correct play there for Beyond Gaming. They are, again, continuing to try and find angles, but they are conceding territory they basically have to. Like, they're not giving up the game because they want to, they're just like, well, we can't actually fight you right now. So top lane's broken down, mid lane's looking real unhealthy there as well. That gold lead's getting further and further away from them. They're now down officially more than 6,000 gold, but you have to keep holding on. Believe in the power of Doggo's as you'll try and get as much gold as you can before the game, you know, has your Nexus exploded or the Baron get taken. Yeah, I mean, Ezreal's a champion who does scale very well. Um, and has the ability to individually make plays, and we've seen how good Doggo is at that. But when you're this far behind, not just yourself, behind the pace of the game, if the Urgot's running at you and he's got his played steel caps and a mythic are completed, and it's not quite the mythic yet because he went to Titanic first, but you know, like you start falling behind, and suddenly your skill shots that you're just poking them with is like, instead of doing 10% of their HP is doing 5%, and you need to land twice as many, and it yeah. suddenly becomes a lot harder, even if you're landing your skill shots, to have that kind of annoying Ezreal gameplay pattern where you just keep hitting people down low. Yeah, gold is good Ezreal insurance, as it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> gold is good in League in general. Yeah. Doggo going to get the red buff at least. So again, moving in the right direction, but the nation focus me have almost a full boat of mythics. I guess, as you said, every with the stop off there is going to be a little bit delayed, but still plenty strong at 2-0 and 3. Do not discount the power of the yoga, especially with the ultimate ready to go. Beautiful is like rapidly approaching item number three, has the third Dirk already in inventory. Unfortunately, haven't seen like the Eclipse Ghostblade like get brought to bay yet, because Understandably, no one from Beyond Gaming is walking up to Uniporn and seeing what happens, because they know what happens, they'll die. Yeah, I think uh, DFM, I thought they were just going to keep crashing bot lane and, and focus on that. I think the way that they've actually approached it is, is pretty smart. They've been spreading around their resources. Um, and so while Udapon is super far ahead, they don't feel like they need to play around him. As you see, Arya getting bot lane turret done by himself. Uh, we saw some of the invades and the top side plays and stuff and where the Rift Heralds were going. So they're moving Udapon around, but they're not just tunneling on their one win condition. Again, as you've called out already, playing more of that one through one. Now collapsing in the enemy jungle. Looking for it now, a steal. That's a very nice Lilia ulti finding too. Husha gonna have to ulti with the ball time. Is there? See you later, Husha. See you later, Silas. It's a oh double kill God. for steal. Yeah, looking really good on this uh, Lilia by steal and showing a lot of these synergies that, you know, didn't jump off the, the champ select to me. Uh, you know, you hit on the, the long range snipe potential with the, the sleep into the Urgot ultimate. But then there as well, the ultimate by Udapon doesn't break sleep because it counts as a dot. And so you're able to layer that on top of sleeping targets, chunk them down low before you reawaken them. And by the time Moe came out of the sleep, he was at 25% HP, gets finished off. So uh, a couple really cool synergies and just so much follow up potential. Like everyone except Arya, you would argue, has the ability to contribute to the whoever's asleep from distance. Even the, the gang ultimate on Leona can can be shot from pretty far away. Yeah, and Akali probably has enough gap closes to <laughs> make it over there. <laughs> oh, you're 3,000 units away, <laughs> don't mind me. Yeah, I mean, without uh, the her original alt one, it's a little bit trickier to close as much distance, but if your target's asleep, you could probably get to make it in time as the second dragon does get picked up for detonation. Focus me, it is Infernal Rift, which I feel like feels amazing <laughs> for given like the, the state of the game and a lot of the combos you can set up here, because all you really want is like more access to you know your enemy's secondary turrets in their base, and the more, Infernal Rift opens it right up. Yeah, more bowling lanes for yeah. Lilia. You know, <laughs> a lot harder to hit a gutter ball now. Yeah, still hasn't missed many. Has uh, every level 13. Oh my god, Kino, I'm I'm so afraid Buddy. for you. You do have teammates, but like, yeah, and every, no, it's like, there's a level eight of Mumu there. There is no way you are the only person here. <laughs> oh God, I respect every self-control there. You show me that Mumu, and I'm like, even if your team is here, dude, I think I'm gonna kill you <laughs> before they show up. And with this flash up too, I mean, Evie, knowing how important this game is, showing the restraint that he probably should have, uh, I, I don't know how many other players would have backed and then let that Mumu waddle Not out me. of there. I'm 100% trading every time, because the Mumu is definitely dead, Yeah, he, but I am also probably dead. You might be. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm sad we'll never get to know. But, uh... Uh, like I said, very important match, though, for DFM here. Um, if they win this game, they put themselves at 3-1. and one, uh, And that means, depending on how the Cloud9 match goes, if Cloud9 drops a game to Unicorns of Love after this, you're actually in a tiebreak situation. They can potentially grab first place. And then if you win that tiebreaker, you are auto-qualified. So 
this is a very important match for DFM to be able to grab that. Beyond Gaming, it basically locks them into fourth place, I believe. Um, and it just puts it into that situation where if you, Korn's a love win, then you have to de defend your fourth place spot because they could have uh, that tiebreaker going as well. Yeah. But I guess the even like the... The worst case scenario, if they win here, is that they get second, right? Which, yeah. Which is still pretty good. All Feels a lot considered. better to be in the winner side of the bracket. Definitely, as Gang does get things started with a solo flat. But uh, follow up there for Arya is coming through. Who's just, just deleted there by Evie at the end of it all. Great little stop punch there. Nice follow up there. Beyond Gaming are going to get themselves on the board. But Kino does use the ulti, but it's still dead. Evie's got a uh -oh. double kill on for the Penta. Here we go. But Gang is getting ripped to pieces. Dogo starting to come alive. Evie gets in there. Gets the flash beer follow up after the ulti. A triple kill out of the Ergo. But Dogo still kicking. Dogo was able to stay alive throughout that. Kite back pretty well. Three for three by the teams there and almost looked like it could have gotten a little bit better for D, uh, Beyond Gaming even, excuse me. Um, you know, Evie had a nice flash alt to get the fear onto Doggo to stop him from snowballing even harder. Uh, but here you can see Husha does a good job kind of splitting the fight and acting as just a, a big meatball, which allows, while he dies, they can focus down Arya and get him low enough that he dies coming out of that stopwatch. And then here, the rest of DFM is kind of funneling in, trying to make it in there. And this entire time, Doggo is just uh, plunking away at people. Evie there gets the uh, kill here, and you see the flash follow-up to try and get the fear stun on Doggo and kill him. But the cleanse E over the wall means that they're able to you know, stay alive there. And a three for three at this point for Beyond, not that bad. No, that's... Exactly what you're after, right? You're just trying to find a way to get gold. You got two different shutdowns, I believe, there with Yudapon and Arya both taking deaths. So, I mean, it's, you know, uh, not, not the biggest chunk out of the mountain of gold that Detonation Focus has built up, but that's really all you could ask for is Doggo getting some gold. He now has two items ready to go. He's got the transform finished up as well. Yes, you're still woefully behind because <laughs> Detonation Focus have done such a good job getting ahead. But if this game continues to elongate, if they keep trading into you, yeah, that time. I was going to say, it's, it's still tough. I mean, Doggo's the richest member on his team at 8,800 gold, basically. Mm -hmm. But he was behind every other member of DFM except Gang. Ah, uh, so, so you're going to say including Your Gang. strongest? No, no. You're, <laughs> not quite that weak. But yeah, uh, you can just see how far ahead these members are. Uh, over 10k gold there already for Evie um, in an extremely strong position. Unfortunately, they didn't get the shutdown on him. Yeah, he is a 503 worth an extra 550 right now. Does have his mythic completed, so he is full on bruiser mode. In fact, he's not even fighting, just going for the split push. Does have the TP. The rest of this team is grouping together as four, so breaking up the 131 because of teleport cooldowns. But Evi is such a threat. I mean, you're seeing how many people are even just pushing towards this side of the map. It can't just be Leong that goes down to fight 1v1 because you're not going to win. You have to at least threaten that somebody else is there, if not two other people. It's uh, it's tough to try and contain all the threats of DFM. I mean, even Steel at this point, three zero five, two items completed, uh, working on his third. He'll carry fights. You know, you can't ignore him. Even he was one of the two members still alive at the tail end of that one. You saw pretty pretty threatening, and that was not the cleanest turn by DFM. Like we said, you know, that's one where Beyond feels pretty good about it, but DFM could have played that much better. Yeah. Uh, we talked about how, you know, how much cool, like, long-range initiation they have with the Lilia and all the setup. The downside being that if that happens, you know, you're a screen away from following up well, on the so Lilia. Well, the funny thing was, you were talking about how only one of them needs to really gap close. <laughs> yeah. That's Arya. Yeah. And guess who's the one? We're yeah. out of his team, getting separated. Uh, yeah. The one with Arya's the like, closer. watch this. Oh, wait. <laughs> Too far forward. <laughs> Alrighty, well, Dragon's back up. This will be the third for Data Firm if they want to grab it. But it does feel like Baron is a bit more of the... Prize the teams are after right now, Beyond Gaming, of course. Still playing defense, but Doggo with the blue buff, shooting down the minions is going to make it challenging. Detonation focus me, they've basically zoned all of this vision now. This is all permitted for them. They'll be taking over this uh, little block, and Steel's going to go ahead and grab this Drake and give the team soul point in case they needed more advantages. Yep, good job keeping the uh, objective snowball going in case you can't close it out without it, you know? <laughs> but there's not much Beyond can do in terms of contesting where DFM is. Uh, need to try and find these pickoffs, but with Infernal Map and how good the vision control has been for DFM, there hasn't really been too many times where the area that they're focusing is not properly warded. So there you see, okay, we're getting Dragon next. They already have a pink in the enemy side of, of the blue buff camp. They have one over the wall going for mid lane down there. They, they basically knew that that was an uncontested situation. I expect here with the resets coming through, you see Leona already working her way up to the top side. They're gonna start poking. Yeah, there you see perfect timing. Assist me ping going down exactly where they want to get their vision next. Uh, this is a team that's working extremely well together right now. Oh, Chainsaw done as well for Evie. So three items now 
fully complete for the Urgot. We're working on the Zonis for Arya after he broke the stopwatch in the earlier fight that got him killed. But Baron is, of course, the target. And it will start by uh, getting that control ward down. There is one in the back for Beyond, so no need to panic for them. They have full vision right now, but uh, after Uniform pushes out this wave, that's a very easy ward for them to clear it if they want. And it looks like Steel is going to hop over and maybe get that done. Yep, Arya just coming to make sure that they can get this vision control. Now heading down to collect the wave. Aatrox just finished pushing in, and they're setting up their 1 through 1. Evie on the top side, this is the correct lane setup because Evie is closer to the objective you're trying to focus down, and as a better frontliner slash engage tool, uh, you want him closer to the fight. In goes Gang once again. No on the target. Husha trying to run interference in the back line. Uniport, though, untouched, shredding them to absolute bits. There goes into stasis, but steel. A two man sleep on the back of the play. The Sulfur down as well. Stolen, though, and oh. dodges Keita. Gets himself stunned, damning, dominating. Finds the follow up fear on Zillian. And Detonation Focus Me finally found the engagement we're looking for last time. Although, we oh. all gave up fighting. Steel does get the kill. That bullet time, absolutely absurd out of Uniport. Moan barely lives to it, and Detonation Focus Me take a clean 3-0 fight. Well done by Detonation Focus Me. Evie roaming down from the top side, getting in range for that fight. The TP flank by Arya. They converge onto Beyond Gaming. Able to find three kills. Baron buff looking pretty free at the tail end of that. Alrighty, well, Baron is indeed going to be pretty well earned here by Detonation Focus Me. Nice and easy there for them. Again, this game has been going in the, the upward trajectory for them for quite a while and it's finally up into the right here as uh, they will be very close to crossing 10k ahead not quite yet but this red bull baron power play should make short work of that you know pretty standard gold lead in a moment yeah um we'll have to see how well they can use this from here uh we'll take another look at how they get this baron buff first and here we like i was saying the have envy roaming down from the top side they didn't see that he had made that rotation was that close to this fight because of the good vision control that they got right before this and so you see Husha basically has to go in to try and split the fight steel does a good job setting up their later targets they already knew they had to kill on Husha, so steel is instead landing his q and ultimate onto the other members which allows the snipe by heavy that combination coming through again and then him being able to set up the next couple kills getting the flash fear follow onto leong um well done there and then this ultimate by Utapon, I actually like a lot because Doggo started getting a number of people low and he was relatively full health at that point. Maybe he starts getting the chase down sequence going, um, but just because the ultimate from Utapon chunked him so low, Doggo had to give up on any potential kills. Yep, Arya's commitment, uh, pretty solid there at the end of it all. Also <laughs> wasn't needed as it turns <laughs> I feel bad for Doggo seeing that, that damage, you know, <laughs> dumber. It's like he's gonna do like 4,600 damage or something like that. He's like, anyone, please help me get some more damage and start getting kills. Uh, instead, it is just more sieging here for Detonation Focus Me. They're going to go ahead and take down just about everything in front of them. Again, very easy for them to take down these towers. Still plenty of time left on the Baron. A minute 40 or so to try and cut down at least one inhibitor tower with. But obviously, they're looking for more. I think two inhibs here would feel excellent. But Detonation Focus Me don't have to do that much. Oh, Jogo. He has cleanse. Oh, oh no, no, he doesn't. Kino action. Goodbye! Oh, no! Evi just puts him in the vine of X. Make it two. There is Evi. Very well earned godlike status there as he grabs the double and picks off Husha. And now is going to put to sleep. Doggo is going to have to cleanse it up. Arya, though, trying to find an assassination in the back line. Assassination, focus me. They're just ignoring the tower. Finally, Utapon guides the wave in, knocks it down, and Hibiter exposed. But once again, Beyond Gaming find themselves down two people. All right, well, there you go. Looking like it's going to be a W for DFM, ending the group at 3 1 after a slightly disappointing start to their play in stage. They rally back very hard, dominate Beyond Gaming in this matchup, and uh, looking really good too, doing it. They have so many unique champions and stuff, as I might be getting ahead of myself. All right, well, not done just yet, yeah, but see. it does look good. I was doing the, the wrap up speech. <laughs> I was ready. I liked it. <laughs> Better to focus me, gonna have to leave the area uh, there, but that's all right. Dragon Souls up, by the way. 10 seconds until that, they'll just fall back there, no problem. I hope they lose now. <laughs> <laughs> I, was already, I was already crowning them, and then they, they, don't, they don't end the game. Blue buff for steel. I mean, if you're gaming, like, I uh, guess we have to fight you, and Uniform's like, you sure? <laughs> Kino just gets erased, and there's another nice follow-up. Gang again, don't miss uh, Envy with the long range! Blend takes down Husha, goes legendary. Oh, it takes Yet Liang as an afterthought. And then they should focus me like, oh, okay, maybe we can end the game. Oh, I feel so bad for Kino, dude. Yep. Great screen simulator all yeah. the time on Amumu. That's uh, it's rough out there. As you said, definitely a champion where when you fall behind it, it's very tough to stay ahead. You don't have some sort of like 
personal steroids to keep you. Tank gets just after shocking uh, against four item <laughs> misfortune at level 16. That is not good enough. As Detonation Focus me, I think finally going to be doing what Mark said in the same breath. I will add it. Just was kind of a long one, and it's just an absolute. Uh, Absolute schlacking here is Evie. Continues to be legendary. They're shredding everyone. No kills will be given over. Hoosha back in time to get aced. Does escape, but Detonation Focus Me will finish 3 1. There we go. Detonation Focus Me, just like I was saying, 3 1 in the group stage, bouncing back after a bit of a rough start. Uh, but you get to see why they were so hyped up coming into playing stage now. They have really unique champion picks. They can get individual leads. A lot of this game came down to just. 1v1 out plays and out trading in both their solo lanes, in the bot lane as well. And then you get to see the team communication. They're so on point with their teleports. As soon as they get an advantage, they do a good job of transferring that play around the map. Um, and then pretty clean from there on out. Not many mistakes to really point at that Beyond Gaming could have exploited. Yeah, uh, to be honest at this point, like I, I know what their record is. I'm pretty confident. Uh, I, I've watched the game. I might have even cast the game. I genuinely don't remember how they lost. Like, it's one of those things where, like, all of my only memory... Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was that was the one loss that they had right at the start of the tournament. It, and it was a tough one. You know, they, they kind of got beat up in that game. But I think they had a really... I mean, a lot of people said it. Bad draft. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. You don't want to chalk said up that losses. <laughs> you don't want to just chalk up loss. Like, oh, bad draft. But I think it is one that you could look at and say, okay, that game aside... They look really, really good. And I think if you're one of these teams in Group A, looking across the aisle at DFM, being either one or number two, you're, you're pretty terrified to go up against them. I mean, if you're good enough to, like, you know, in the haze of the Hopium for me to forget what even happened up against Cloud9 when you got pretty well beaten, I think that DFM are feeling pretty good. I want that nation focus me there and Beyond Gaming, but it's a banger. Cloud9 is looking to bring the lightning as they take the Unicorns of Love. And as we go, uh, Cloud9's team's pick Thunderstruck by ACDC as the song that represents their playstyle and the rest of the teams competing at Worlds on the official LOL playlist on Spotify. We'll see you on the other side. Yes, the king of the jungle. Time for a quick Red Bull. Red Bull? But you still won't be quicker than the lion. I don't have to be quicker than the lion. Just quicker than you. Red Bull gives you wings. They say where the legends come from. You know what a hero looks like.
And welcome back to Iceland for 2021 playing stage of the World Championship. The Nation for Kiss Me are now 3 and 1 in their group. And Kazu, thank you so much for joining me. You're the strategic you. coach of the, uh, of the team. Uh, first, I want to get your thoughts on the performance so far from the team. まあ、えっと、このグループが、えっと、非常に大変なグループであることは全員でしっかりと認識して、しっかりとアイスランドに来る前からのしっかりと練習が今回実ったのかなと、練習の成果が出たのかなと思ってます。So uh, we saw this fact and then pre uh, prepared very well even uh, before we came to Iceland. So this whole preparation, you know, uh, worked for us. Yeah, it worked and it really shows actually, especially in the, in the draft because you managed to implement also the power picks, especially from Evi on the top lane. I'm thinking about the Urgot here. So talk me through the preparation from the draft to make this champion work in the current meta and for the team. えっと、ま、色々と準備されたことがこう非常に実ったと思うんですけど、特にエビさんのあの、顎だったりとか、そういうパワーピックみたいなのが当たったと思うんですけど、えっと、ま、このピックまわりでチームとして準備したことについて少